All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 6, Simple Harmonic Motion. The section is 6.C, Equations of Motion for Simple Harmonic. Here, uh, here's the scenario. A cart of mass M resting on a smooth surface is attached to an ideal spring. The cart is displacement to the right as the distance delta x from equilibrium and release. While the cart oscillates around the equilibrium position, a motion detector collects data to make the following graph of position as a function of time. Before we read this, I would like to give you some notes, all right, so we understand the right vocab that we're using. The frequency is the number of cycles or the number of wavelength passing through a position in one second. The units of frequency is considered called hertz, which means one second. The wavelength is measured from peak to peak. So from here, peak to peak or any. OK, so here it would be one complete. Um, it would be considered one wavelength here. Right. So springs are like waves and circles. OK, um, here's one period. A period T is the time for one revolution or in case in this case spring. The time for one complete oscillation or one crest and one trough, one crest, one trough, and it comes back here to equilibrium. OK, oscillations can be also be called vibrations and cycles. This is the amplitude from equilibrium to the maximum height. It's called the amplitude. Okay. Um, as you go to the right, it's called the equilibrium. Um, it's in the equilibrium time. Uh, period is defined as two pi over omega, or one over f, which is considered the frequency. Notice time and frequencies are inverse of each other. Okay. A more interesting situation develops when we exert the same force on the system. It repeats in re in repetitive periodic motion. This is the simple harmonic motion. Here you should see that it is fully compressed. Amplitude is its maximum height here at the amplitude. Here it's fully stretched, which is at its trough. Here, do you see how it comes back to its original position? It completes its full cycle here. That's called T, the time it takes to complete one full cycle. A stands for the amplitude, F for the frequency, and T is for the period. Good. You're going to need these ideas to help you do this. If you would like a more detailed explanation on the notes, please watch the simple harmonic lecture notes. All right. So let's see how long it takes for T for the period. So how long did it take for this to complete one full cycle? So it starts from here and it goes all the way until it reaches this. So it goes from zero all the way to four. So we could write here four seconds. OK, because this is its complete cycle. Now, F is considered its frequency, so you can just write it right here. T is equal to one over F and we know that here it is four. So you can write you can make the substitution here. T equals to four. Multiply frequency is equal to one fourth. You could also write that as point uh, two five. The units for frequency is considered like we said here is called Hertz, which is per second. So the frequency here is 0 0.25 hertz. So 0.25 of the wave occurred in one second. That's what this means. Now, W, which is, which is its angular velocity. OK, how do we get its angular velocity? We can use this formula right here. T is equal to 2 pi over omega. Now we can solve for um, W or omega. OK, so T is 4, 2 pi over W. Cross multiply, you get W. <laughs> omega is equal to 2 pi over 4, which can be simplified to just uh, pi over 2. So you could say here, this is pi over 2. The units for this is rad over seconds. All right, 
Here's the math if you would like to see it. Okay. Do you need to memorize this formula? No, this is actually given to you on your formula sheet. Here, the time of its maximum positive velocity, okay, positive velocity, right, would be right here. Okay, because again, this is when it's at equilibrium. So this is when it's at equilibrium, but this is when it's fully stretched, so it's right here. Then it comes back here to equilibrium. It's, it's fully stretched here. It's fully stretched. Right here, fully compressed. And this is at um, equilibrium right here. This is also at equilibrium. Okay. So here, the time of its maximum positive velocity would here would be at three seconds. Now, the time of its maximum negative velocity is where? Right here, it would be at negative velocity because look, look at it. This is, its slope here is negative. The slope here, positive, right? Positive velocity. Negative velocity would be occur here at one second. Is this the only spot? Okay, it's also at right here. Do you see how this repeats right here? This, this, it's going down. So the slope here is also negative. So you could also say five at five second as well. The time when velocity equals to zero. Okay, so velocity equals to zero. So this is when velocity equals to zero. So think about this as um, flat slope. So let's let me make that green. Okay, we know that occurs where here at zero seconds. Okay, then we have it here at two seconds. Then we have here at four seconds. Then we have here at six seconds. Okay, these are all when velocity equals to zero. Time of the maximum positive acceleration. You want to look at its positive acceleration, okay? So look about where it's touching this, um, it's going inwards, okay? So here, okay, positive. So this is going in what direction here? It's here, positive, all right? This is occurring at two seconds. And here, it's also occurring at six seconds. It's positive. It's going inwards. Okay, it's point towards the inside of the circle. Remember, centripetal acceleration at two seconds and six seconds. Negative acceleration. So it's going down here. The acceleration here is going to be negative, and the acceleration here is also negative. So here, that occurred at zero seconds. And that was also at four seconds. Time when acceleration is equal to zero. All right. So look at when it equals to zero. So here, all right, it's not going anywhere. Here, it's not going anywhere. And here, it's not going anywhere. So that point was one second. Uh, that is also when it was three second. And that is also at five seconds. Okay. So there you go. That's how it would look like. Good? Okay. Now, some student uses this equation, and if you've seen the lecture notes, you should see how they get this. This is the position. is defined by the cosine wave, and we want to write this. All right, so what is our amplitude? Okay, our amplitude here is going to be defined by what? Let's take a look. Okay. How far did it go up? It goes up to, to all the way to four. Two pi f was point two five, or you can write that as um, zero point two five, or you can write that as one fourth, however you want to write it. 
um, and we have t. Okay, so we could write down the formula x equals to 4 cosine parentheses 2 pi. Uh, you can do 0 0.25 or 1 fourth, so you could do 1 fourth here. Um, then we have t. You can rewrite this x equals to 4 cosine. What's 1 fourth of 2? I think this becomes a half. So this is pi over pi over a half t. Okay, you just multiply two times one fourth. That's how we got that. All right, we got this information from the chart. A student, another student graphs and but they have this. Another student collects the following data from the same exact thing, but they got this graph. What is the difference? Look at what's the difference from this one and this one. Notice their starting value. The starting value here is what? Zero. Okay, what does this mean? This is at equilibrium. So you can just say here, okay, that the students here, they started when it was fully compressed, but these students started at equilibrium. That's what you can write. All right, so what I wrote is the students from part A start their motion sensor when the cart was fully compressed. Their starting value on the graph had a value of 4. You can see there, value of 4. The students from part C started their motion sensor when the cart was at equilibrium. Equilibrium, that's why their starting position had a value of 0. But it behaves the same exact way. It's the same cart, but it starts um, differently. Okay. The fact that this was starting from zero, this will actually change the equation. Okay, it has everything is the same. So let me grab this from this equation. But it's actually no longer a sine. It's no longer a cosine wave. This is considered a sine wave. Okay, so it's going to be the same way, but now it's going to be sine. Right, x is equal to 4, same thing, but now it's sine pi squared over t. All right, pi over 2 times t. So it's the same thing, it's just that this is called a sine wave. All right, this is considered a sine wave. All right, so now. The second group repeats the same procedure, thinking that perhaps if they add mass to the cart, it would help their analysis. On the graph in part C above, sketch what position and time graph would look like for the cart with four of its mass. Okay, so how does mass affect this? So I would like for you to actually look at these notes right here from what I wrote, right? The period T, okay? The period t is given by t equals to 2 pi square root m over k. You would see that the larger m, the longer the period, be, okay, and stiffer the spring k, the shorter the period. Good. This makes sense since. Okay. This makes sense since a larger mass means more inertia, therefore slower response. So how would this one look like? Okay, if m increases, what happens to the period? Okay, all right, should look like this. Okay, so let's make this purple. Okay, so from this time, how does it look like? So it's going to start at the same spot. Okay. But now it's going to take longer for it to go to its trough, to its peak, because again, it has more inertia to move. Okay. Right. Then it slowly decay. Boom. All right. Again, why? It has a. longer the period, larger the mass, okay? So think about it numerically what happened, okay? T equals to 2 pi 
square root m over k. This if goes if uh, if goes up, then this period goes up. Good. Now. So if mass increases, period increases. What about K? What about K? If K increases, what happens to the T? Numerator. So this goes down. OK? All right, there you go. Those are all your solutions uh, for 6C.